Hey, what's up? My name is DJ Willie, and you're watching Furticulture. Hi, DJ Willie here with Willie Tape, the latest and greatest way to fix, fill, and seal anything fast and make it last. Willie Tape has the strength for even the toughest breaks. Willie Tape isn't just any regular duct tape. Its quadruple thick adhesive virtually welds itself to any surface, instantly stopping any leak. Don't let party fouls ruin the function. Get Willie Tape and get that shit bussin'. Any leak, big or small, Willie Tape can fix them all. Here's how to order. To purchase Willie Tape, please call 1-800-BOOK-DJ-WILLIE. Willie Tape is not liable for not sticking and cannot be used for major leaks. Ready, you killed this shit for real, nigga. Kind of my interests in movies really back in the day when I was a teenager. Um, I saw the movie Tron Legacy and it, um, Daft Punk did the score for that movie and they had a cameo in it and I found out about them and they were big DJs back in the day and stuff and from there my interest in DJing just took off. Um, I have a lot. That's a really hard answer. I could give you three. Uh, one more time is just an all-time favorite of mine. Um, technological, I like a lot. Um, something about us, I like a lot from uh, from Discovery. Um, they're one of nowadays. That's a really tough question for me. Also, um, it kind of goes back and forth between who who I like the most. Um, their top. Kanye West is one of my favorites. Um, it gets a bit more trickier as I go along from there. It's really just based on my mood. I listen to too much music, so it just kind of flips around. But those two are definitely some of my biggest influences. Um, it depends on the gig. Um, a lot of them, I will admit, I don't exactly put a set together. I kind of just. Wing it a little. I do usually have ideas about what I want to do, but I just don't have it structured. Um, but some of the bigger gigs and certain ones, um, I'll make more of a, more of a set list for and have it a bit more planned out. It depends on the party. Uh, I would probably the most successful song I have is probably "No Hands." Uh, people just know the whole song. I, I, I don't really have many songs where they just know the whole song and they want me to play the whole song even for so long. I've been getting bigger gigs and serious, more serious gigs for the past three years now and uh, that song has just never failed so I, I'd probably have to say no hands. Um, really just production mostly. Um, I've been making beats and stuff uh, for around the same amount of time as I've been DJing, but they weren't really clicking until about seven or eight months ago. And from there, I've just really started working on that a bit more and putting a lot more focus into that. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I've been building my uh, setup for the past few years along with DJ equipment and yeah, I've just been putting more time into that and uh, it's really been connecting and working with a lot of great rappers around Atlanta and stuff. Some of my favorites um, that I currently work with are David the Tragic, Burgundy, Ren Hayes, Jay Sensei, to name a few, um, NYTs. As far as ones I want to work with that aren't really as much. Um, I've only done one with them so far, but I want to work more with Jelani and Monty. A bit more producers, um, David X, he's been one of my biggest influences since high school. Um, pop star Benny I'd love to work with. Kenny Mason. <laughs> Kenny Mason, yeah. Uh, yes, I am from Atlanta. Um, born and lived most of my life here. Um, I love the culture, it's very diverse, um, very spread out. Kind of got to look around a little bit, really pay attention. Um, but there are a lot of artists around here that really deserve the recognition and there definitely is a boom that's coming here. 
uh, a decent amount of people that I work with now. Um, I met in high school, um, but I was a lot more quiet then, so it was mostly me just pulling up to their events and showing support. Over time, as I came into college and stuff, I've gained more confidence and uh, become more outgoing nowadays. And uh, I kind of started with just parties um, that my friends were pulling, dorm parties back in the day here at Georgia State, and uh, smaller events. Gradually just worked my way up through connections I made from those events. And um, just putting my name out there more and doing any event that really came my way. It took a long time, but most of what I tried to do was more behind the scenes early on and just improving on my technique and my craft and building myself up from there. And then the gigs would just come along and over time people would just recognize and notice and put my name out and help me out more and work with me. Um, it's fantastic. Um, there's a lot of support out there for smaller names. It's a big community that just puts each other on and tries to help each other in any way they can. You know, sh showing support is very easy. It, it doesn't cost a lot and it doesn't take a lot of time. There's a lot of things you can do, even something as simple as liking a video, or commenting or something on someone's post or someone's song, and um, or even just sharing it on, in, on Instagram or Twitter or anywhere. And, um, there's definitely been a lot, lot of support for my stuff, and it's been very amazing. And yeah, it's it's part of it's a large part of the reason why I am here today. Um, so back back before we were um we we were doing two sport parties back then. Um, I wasn't even DJing those. Um, it was just really big parties we'd throw and Ron was a part of that and that's how I met him and from there um, he we kind of talked and he found out about me DJing and stuff and we started throwing events together and over time they would just click and get bigger and bigger and yeah from there that's pretty much how it happened we met and uh, brought our like likeliness together and two brains working together create something great <laughs> Um, it's possible. Um, actually, before I did music, that's what I was doing. I, I was making YouTube videos back when I was a teenager. And um, my interest in making movies or music videos and stuff like that really is what kind of brought me into DJing and music. So I've always tried to implement visual, si visual aspects to anything I do, um, whether it's something like a sticker video or anything else. And um, I'd love to try to do, do more stuff with that, especially. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, black collaboration, that's the biggest name of the game with that. Um, all production by myself and really just trying to get some names out, not just myself, but everyone involved. Um, there's a lot of great people that worked on, that were involved with the project. Um, who I definitely believe needs to be recognized and um, that's the biggest thing, just um, getting the attention that all the artists involved deserve on the project. Um, two big things, it's just um, you need to put in the work. The work is very important. Um, I put in hours to get to where I am today. I would come home from high school mix for like four hours a day and then do homework and stay absurdly late and go to school the next day um, while also working. Um, that the work you put in is very important. Really making a name for yourself and bringing something more than just playing whatever top 40 song is going on and then also just patience. Um, every gig may not be the best. Um, you may not be happy with that, the response or the outcome but you don't know who's going to be at each gig. You don't know who's going to um, hear you or who's going to be involved there um, and the community is very important here and they do they can do a lot for you and they can really help you and collaboration in general is very important um, but patience and your work ethic is the most important and um, if you if you can put those together put the work in stay humble stay focused um, and stay patient um, that will get you far Um, I kind of had a problem with how much, how many times I played a song, but um, 
more, it's kind of recent, but at the same time, it's kind of stood the test of time for me, and it's been almost a year, uh, Hot by Young Thug and Gunna. Oh yeah. <laughs> that song um, I became a little too obsessed with, and um, probably a personal favorite of mine, um, Dancing Queen by ABBA. Um, that's a big throwback, um, and it's just, it feels like a timeless song, and it feels like, I, I don't know, it just feels like my youth in a way. It just feels like a song where you feel young and you feel amazing and like, just, you don't want any, you don't want whatever you're doing to end, whatever it is that you love doing. Like, you just never want it to end. Um, in some ways I feel like it hurts, but at the same time I think it creates more ways for DJs to become better. Um, whereas back then, you know, you'd have to buy all your vinyls and stuff, you know, that can become expensive. And also just carrying crates and stuff, that can be difficult, but um, with just how av widely available music is, yes, a lot of people can get a lot of the same things, but that's where um, really it's going to test how much music you listen to, if you can really expand on what you listen to, even if it's just remixes of songs, um, looking out more for smaller people. Um, I especially look heavily on SoundCloud and look for a lot of different producers that are making remixes and different artists and new stuff that's coming out um, and even just more instrumentals. Um, I really just try to expand my range and things I listen to and things that I end up using in my mixes instead of just playing the same old stuff. And if it's a popular song, I try to play more of a remix or more of a flip with things. But um, while it, it may be more difficult, um, at the same time, your, your reach and how much you can do is greater and I feel like you just you know figure it out and really discover a sound for yourself and you can really recreate a lot of things and create your own sound. There's definitely going to be a lot more DJs. Um, I've noticed a way bigger spike in the amount of DJs I'm seeing and also the amount of sounds that I'm hearing for uh, DJs and what they're mixing, especially more genres of music they're choosing in, just like hip hop or EDM or house, um, just a lot more sounds and ideas coming through. One of the big things I would I've been seeing and I really, um, I just really love is the amount of women that been, women that are coming in and DJing. Um, that's been very dope, and um, I'd love to see more of them being recognized, um, mainly in the scene. Jays like Jeannie, uh, Milla Bucks, and uh, Cleo, um, they're all insane. And um, that's something I'd love to see a big push for um, going down the years. Um, but yeah, just more of an interest in it and um, just more ideas and more sounds and stuff like that. Um, one thing I really try to do is um, and this takes a lot of time, is like, there's a point where like, I got to where you could just kind of hear things and kind of know how fast they are, or what kind of song this is and stuff. And um, over time, it just kind of helps you recognize music more and I guess hear more ideas for things. And to me, that doesn't even just help DJs, it also helps producers and artists of any kind, just with music and um, just in general, um, I really think Recognizing music and listening to music the most, that's really what it comes down to. And listening to as much music as you can, even if you're not a DJ, can really help you. But I think that's the best trick, is that you need to listen to music. You need to listen to everything. Not just like whatever the top artists are putting out right now. You need to listen to almost everything you can. And it doesn't just help you with just understanding music and understanding sounds and how to mix them, but also just your range with um, different styles and different genres, it can really help you stand out on your own with whatever kind of stuff you're doing in music. So the biggest trick really is just listening, I would say. The controlled press, the white press,
inflames the white public against Negroes. It, the police are able to use it to paint the Negro community as a criminal element. The police are able to use the press to make the white public think that 90% or 99% of the Negroes in the Negro community are criminals. And once the white public is convinced that most of the Negro community is a criminal element, then this automatically paves the way for the police to move into the Negro community, exercising Gestapo tactics, stopping any black man who is in the, on, on the sidewalk, whether he is guilty or whether he is innocent, whether he is well-dressed or whether he is poorly dressed, whether he is educated or whether he is dumb, whether he's a Christian or whether he's a Muslim, as long as he is black and a member of the Negro community, the white public thinks that the white policeman is justified in going in there and trampling on that man's civil rights and on that man's human rights. Once the police have convinced the white public that the so-called Negro community is a criminal element, they can go in and question, brutalize, murder unarmed innocent Negroes and the white public is gullible enough to back them up. This makes the Negro community a police state. This makes the Negro neighborhood a police state. It's the, it's the most heavily patrolled. It has more police in it than any other neighborhood, yet it has more crime in it than any other neighborhood. How can you have more cops and more crime? Why? It shows you that the cops must be in cahoots with the criminals. 